recording. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the respected dignitaries, distinguished speakers, honorable participants, and the loving audience, all beautiful people present here from all around the globe. I, Ms. Nada Radkovic, IIU board member, country director, IIU Croatia, the president of Research Center IIU, and the global community CEO, welcome you all to the World Education Summit 2023 on the topic, the Roadmap of Education 2030. Today, the day one, jointly organized by International Internship University, Global Community for Education 2030, and IIU Research Center. Today, let me first introduce our organizer. Global Community for Education 2030 has been formed to promote and implement United Nations 2030 Agenda SDG 4 for making education accessible to all through partnerships, policy guidance, capacity development, monitoring, advocacy. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is a plan of action for people, planet, and prosperity. It comprises 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Sustainable Development Goal 4 is the Education Goal 2. Ensure inclusive and equitable quality education. Promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Education 2030 is the Incheon Declaration and Framework for Action for the Implementation of SDG 4. Professor Pradip Tamanda is the founder of Global Educators Forum and Global Metaverse Community. He is here also the founder. Mr. Push Pandit is the founder of International Internship University, and he is the president. Professor Nader Radkovic is the president of IIU Research Center and is the COO. Dr. Snikta Kadam is the COO of International Internship University, and she is the chairperson of Global Community for Education 2030. So let me introduce our second organizer. International Internship University is a leading virtual education system and global brand confederation which is the most valuable and trusted worldwide and well reputed in delivering innovative programs globally. It is a trusted name for quality training programs and is committed to provide better and virtual education to all the young learners of the globe. AIU is metamorphosing the conventional education system by cutting down the additional costs and providing access to more than 1,000 plus courses, internships to their e-learners across the globe with the help of 1,000 plus global educators. In a short span of time, IAU has spread its wings in 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Mr. Piyush Pandit Sir a committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist from the last two decades. Research Center IAU is a unique hub establishment founded also by International Internship University. It is giving you an opportunity to researchers, authors, educators, students, scholars across the globe, and it is enhancing the research opportunities, academic excellence, real world problem solving, knowledge creation and dissemination. High caliber global educators team is dedicated to it. Me, Professor Nader Radkot, as the president of IIU Research Center, think that if you have even thought about how would be the world without education, research, science, innovation, technology, or any development of anything, then you need to join us. So today, let us acquire a knowledge of future education. Education can change the way you look at yourself and the world. And a good education is a key to successful life. Today, we are here for the first time in the new year with a new with new plans, with new great organization, and with new, with our eminent great educators, researchers, authors, speakers. And 
people say this. Yes, you can. And yes, we can change the world with education. So today, I have an amazing, I have an amazing uh, professor who will lead and moderate this first world summit. So he is well known, Professor Karudin Sunkarmin, FCILP, adjunct professor from Asia Metropolitan University, AMU from Malaysia. He is an amazing professor, educator, researcher, and you know what I like at him. He is a great person, a great person with a big heart. So now I want to give a word to my Professor Karudin. Professor Karudin, welcome. Thank you, Prof. Nada, for the kind introduction. Um, this is our first uh, summit, first conference for the year 2023. Okay. Uh, and I want, I am, well, before uh, we call the first speaker, again, as a moderator, I will not be doing my job if I do not give uh, one or two minutes here, uh, my own views uh, to set the scene for our this two-day world conference. Uh, before I forget, I'm honored and I'm deeply humbled that I've been in, asked, I've been invited to uh, moderate on this first day. I'm not sure whether uh, I'm honored or humbled, but uh, sometimes I think I'm also being punished by Professor Pradip Tamandal. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Now, okay, coming seriously, uh, honorable, uh, respected scholars, um, researchers, professors, humanitarian activists, whoever you are from all over the world, okay? Um, we will be listening to experts uh, from different parts of the world who will be sharing with us their version or their view of what a, uh, the world, uh, the theme is, uh, the roadmap for education in 2030. So quickly, yeah, in, in, in just one or two minutes, I just want to share with you my own reflection. You know, when we were young, we were talking about in education, right? The three R, the reading, the writing, yeah, okay, and the arithmetic. And then the, in, during, during the kindergarten, during the primary, secondary, and tertiary. And then in 2015, the whole world was talking about OBE. I'm sure you remember that, you know, the outcome-based education. And then we were talking about the digital education, face-to-face, -face, online, blah, blah, blah. And then COVID, our good friend COVID came around. For two years, we've been meeting like this online, okay, virtual, and then hybrid, all these new terms coming in education. But the most interesting that I want to share with you today, I'm sure you know, you are also, you also are aware about it. It's causing a bit of panic around all over the world uh, to the universities. And you guess it right. The artificial intelligence chat GPT. Okay, you can do a lot of things, okay, in just three seconds and a lot of, of your assignments will be done. You just cut, cut and paste and copy into your, your word. Okay, that's the latest threat to the universities and education. Okay, and then of course, someone just mentioned just now, uh, lifelong education, Prof. Nada had mentioned it. Okay, now basically what we are going to discuss these two days is about the roadmap of education. Now roadmap, to put it in simple language, okay, uh, you can also look at it as a strategy. Okay, and then you would be in, in preparing your roadmap, the road that you want to use or the road that no one has used or creating a new road that uh, nobody has ever, ever thought about. These are some of the things that you as professionals mm -hmm. in education would be contributing to world education in 2030. And the three fundamental questions would be, where are we now? These are all basic strategy questions, okay? Where do we want to go, okay, as educationists? And how do we get there? Okay, with that, uh, what do you call a brief, quick uh, setting the scene, I, without further ado, without uh, wasting much more time, I'm sure Dr. Firda cannot wait to start her presentation. I like, like, like to call upon my good friend, uh, Professor Firda, who is uh, Dean of a new university that she has just joined, Binawan University in Jakarta, to share with us her views about the roadmap of education in 2030. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone, please join us in giving her a round of uh, applause to welcome her. All yours, Dr. Firda Basbe. Uh, you are muted. Okay, we can't hear you. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Prof. Hi, Rudin, uh, the, head, the, the one and only handsome man. And then also the beautiful Prof. Nada. 
Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. Good morning. Uh, here is uh, 5.44 in Jakarta. So I have uh, slides to present and it will take uh, 10 minutes. Maybe, yeah, hopefully. Wonderful. I forgot to mention everyone is given 10 yeah. minutes. Yes, please. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the promise of education in Indonesia, the promise and its challenge, yeah, in Indonesia, Indonesia education challenges. So uh, the vision of education 2013 is uh, to transform life through education, recognizing the important role of education as main driver of development. So this new vision is fully captured in the proposed SDG. Point number four, to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunity for all. <clears throat> Here in the quality education, point number four. So let me introduce uh, Indonesia. This is Indonesia spreading from here, uh, Aceh to Papua. Uh, here, Jakarta, I'm here in Jakarta in tiny island called Java. Okay, so uh, the neighbor is Malaysia and Kuala Lumpur and also the Philippines. So Indonesia comprises more than 17,500 islands spread over 5,000 kilometers east to west and three time zone and then with 268 million people is the world's most populous Muslim majority nation. Majority, 87% uh, Muslim and almost 10% are Christian. So it has more than 70, 700 distinct ethnic and linguistic group with more than 40% population live on the island of Java. So with that uh, geographical uh, and economic context, it's also a challenge for government to give uh, all uh, education uh, has the same quality from Aceh to Papua. So population by age group has median age of young people, uh, about 30 years, and is expected to exceed 300 million by 2045. Uh, here, the real GDP projected keep growing uh, as it were 10 largest economy and its current growth rates are sustained expected to become the fourth largest economy by 2050. <clears throat> uh, historically, it's colonized by the Dutch. So before the colonial time, schools were commonly founded by Islamic scholars and the Dutch introduced limited elementary education. So Indonesia school system today is all citizens must undertake 12 years of compulsory education six years at elementary level and eight at middle and high school level. Okay, so here's uh, primary, primary, secondary, and tertiary. I also, uh, in parallel of that nation education, there are also Muslim, Muslim uh, education. is from Madrasa, Ibtidaiya, Arsanawiya, and Alawiya. So this is tertiary education from 19 to 30 years of age. Literacy rate is improving uh, among the age group uh, and also education is central of the government development agenda. Implement a broad range of education, decentralized, boosting education spending. Uh, it's But compared to Malaysia to Singapore, spending remains below that its neighborhood countries. And also if you talk about uh, technology, AI that people have didn't mention, not all of the, only in a big city uh, in Indonesia. Uh, in rural, uh, they are not even have an electricity yet. So the teachers, more than 3.3 million teachers work in Indonesia classroom every day, along with 294 professor, lecturer at the tertiary level in early childhood education. However, uh, for students to learn, teaching has to be active, effective and teachers take uh, the central role. So to improve their quality, Indonesia need to more effectively 
is uh, not focused on quantity but also the uh, the quality of the teacher uh, here are some goals uh, expected in 2030 uh, the enrollment rate 65 percent however is uh, is only 65 percent yeah uh, projected in 2030 so statistic that I saw that children who come from lower income families and live in rural areas are less likely to attend primary education and also uh, higher secondary only 60 60 uh, 96 projected in 2030 with business uh, as usual scenario so uh, gross enrollment rate that doesn't reach 100 percent indicates that they are out of school children who either didn't enroll or drop out yeah drop out so why they drop out the main reason is uh, insufficient funds working marriage taking care of the household assume that education is enough or school is far or disabled or others okay and the enrollment rate the their education is only 43.85 percent so a comprehensive financial system which includes scholarship for bright students because not many uh not many citizens goes to tertiary uh education so overcoming the equity problem through financial aid have been practiced by many middle income countries such so chile brazil and colombia so indonesia also go to that uh, direction and then the ratio of girls of boy because it's quality education need also the uh, gender equality uh, surprisingly uh, the number of girls compared to boys are uh, uh, higher uh, rather than boys in secondary and tertiary uh, education and uh, net ratio of girl to boys almost uh, all education level uh, so higher participation of girls than uh, the boys. This is the data from Minister of Education and Cultures. And uh, the policy, the strengthening policy, plan legislation system, we have a lot of uh, policy accelerate to implementation of 12 years compulsory education program, improve quality of vocational education, not only uh, for the university, but also the vocational the quality of teaching and learning uh, so that students gain basic ability to think critically because uh, critically yeah, this is the uh, very important to think critically and then improve the management of quality of teachers and education staff uh, also strengthening of autonomy in higher education vocational competency uh, because the diverse of the uh, country is consists of 34 province and every province has their own uh, different education so education so far indonesia has achieved much in development also since early 2000 indonesia has implemented a broad range of education reform uh, is the world fourth largest because of the number of the system collectively employs 3.3 million teachers uh an addition uh, ad additional 200,000 early childhood education service support and also the non-formal vocational training system more than 4,000 institutions however but it needs to focus more on learning some province in Indonesia especially those in the central region perform well especially in the city but while others often in the east and far west perform poorly only four of the 34 province had average grade 12 score above the minimum passing score of 50 feet here uh, the spreading is only uh, this is the national standard it's only 10 uh, province that uh, meet the national standard of education so it needs multiple things so learning also need politician to make a, a strategy it needs private sector it needs 
civil society is not only a teacher and the school itself is also needs uh, other actors, international actors and bureaucrats. Okay, so the way forward uh, of Indonesia education is we are fully aware that the implementation of point four needs huge sources of financing. So a magnificent financing strategy is a must while supporting the creative and innovative financing to develop is also a necessity. Apart from that, Indonesia will always put its best to the successful achievement of education 2030 agenda. So why is that? Because education is for improving the lives of others and for living your community and work better than you found it by Marianne Wright Edelman. So thank you very much for the time allotted for this matter. Go back to you, Professor Hairuddin. Thank you, Prof. Dr. Firda. Awesome. Wonderful. You have started this uh, conference, uh, you know, in a very, uh, if I may just summarize what you just said, you, you, you what you call the main driver of development, okay? Uh, what you call is to promote a lifelong education for all. So that is the point that you wanted to go in. And you have shared with us the policy roadmap of Indonesia for 2030. Okay, and uh, the last part, part I like also when you closed it, a lot of it is based on the uh, SDG 4 on education. Thank you very much again, uh, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Firda Basbe for sharing with us Indonesia's uh, roadmap for 2030. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, can we join him to give her a big uh, applause? Thank you, Dr. Firda. I now like to call upon our uh, next speaker uh, for the day. Um, uh, Ms. Sones uh, Barjwaj, I hope I pronounce your name correctly, Sones. Professor uh, Samir, you need to yes. practice that amazing, beautiful lady is coming. <laughs> That's why I was worried. I was worried that I may not uh, uh, pronounce, and although we've been speaking a lot, you know, in so many seminars. Now, uh, Sonesh is a global motivational speaker, certified life and business coach, author, entrepreneur, and youth mentor from India. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Sonesh. Dr. All, your, all your Sonesh, the floor is yours Thank for you. 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Keruddin. I think it's amazing to hear from you, no doubt. Uh, and where is our wonderful Professor Nada? I missed your screen. Oh, yes, she is on the top. Okay, yeah. great. So thank you so much and for such a lovely, kind and powerful intro. So no doubt, because moderators always set the stage at the right momentum and that gives the flow to all the speakers. So thank you so much for such a great start. And Professor Firda was amazing to give the right kickstart to the entire theme, you know, World Education Summit. So without further delay, I'll be just going ahead with what exactly we need to do when it comes to world education. Because education is a very, very important and core area as we all know. But the most important thing is we are doing a lot of things into education, but where we are heading is something also we need to analyze and what else we can bring in the form of change to ensure that we have the right type of movement when it comes to the entire education theme. So I'm just going to start with that. Now, first is, as very rightly pointed out, SDG 4 is something which we are right now targeting in terms of education 2030 when we talk about the entire roadmap. So the main key principles, if I say about SDG 4, education 2030 visions are like lifelong learning, quality of education, that is with respect to relevance and learning outcomes, and equity and inclusion. Now, progress towards SDG 4 education 2030 is coordinated and monitored by a lot of global and regional levels, uh, governing bodies, I would say, who are rightly pointing out that what they're supposed to and how they are supposed to. As we are right now just gone through 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, I'll be just quickly uh, recap gaining on to those points that what are the four core pillars of education when we talk about our future roadmap. 
So the four pillars of education, especially if I talk about 21st century, like if, if I just go through learning to know, learning to do, learning to live and learning to be. Now, these are something called 4L principle, which we talk about the, about the four pillars of education. Now, 2030, when we talk about first 4.1 under SDG 4, if I have to uh, focus on here, it ensures that all the girls and the boys completely get their free, equitable and quality primary and secondary education, leading to relevant and effective learning outcomes. Now, this is the goal when we talk about under SDG 4.1. But the challenge comes what we are doing in order to fulfill this and create the solid foundation so that 2030 looks like quite promising, right? So the provision of this entire uh, 12 years of free, publicly funded or inclusive, equitable quality primary and secondary education of which at least nine years are compulsory leading to relevant learning outcomes should be ensured for all without discrimination. Focus number two, that is target point number 4.2. If I have to talk from 2030 perspective, it ensures that all the girls and the boys have access to quality early childhood development, care, and pre-primary education so that they are ready for primary education. Now, that's again very, very important. The provision of at least one year of free and compulsory quality primary education is encouraged to be delivered by well-trained educators as well as that of early childhood development and care. When I focus on 4.3, by uh, focusing on 2030 as a key goal, it ensures on equal access for all the women and men to affordable and quality technical, vocational, and tertiary education, including universities. Now, it is imperative to reduce, when I say about reduction, in, in terms of like barriers to skill development and technical and vocational education and training. Nothing but TVET, starting from your secondary levels as well as to your tertiary education, including universities, and to provide lifelong learning opportunities for youth and adults. So the provision of tertiary education should be made progressively free in line with existing international agreements, whatever we are looking out at a global uh, entire uh, way of educating and from the educators as a fraternity. Target point number 4.4, if I have to talk here, it's basically substantially increase the number of youth and adults who have relevant skills, including technical and vocational skills for employment, decent jobs and entrepreneurship. Now, this is a very, very important and core area to focus on, because today, especially if I talk India as a country, we have huge youth population. But again, the big question mark we have, what we are doing with this entire population in terms of education? Are they growing onto the right path where they are able to use their education to have a solid and concrete foundation for they themselves, not from only a point of degree holder, but rather becoming a livelihood holder? Right. So here the first access should be given to the equitable access to TVT needs to be expanded while quality is ensured because quality is the most important criteria here. Learning opportunities should be increased and diversified using a wide range of education and training modalities so that all the youth and the adults, especially girls and women, can acquire relevant knowledge, skills, and competencies for decent work and life. Today, we all need to get rid of this whole orthodox paradigm in our mind that a woman after a certain age or probably a woman is only meant to have a household degree holders. <laughs> we have to come out of this whole concept because please understand every life is precious, everyone's education is precious. And if you don't empower a female in your uh, complete family paradigm, I think you are doing the biggest injustice to the mankind, right? Because she being the core member in the family, she can take care of a lot of things if she's well-educated and if she really understands her rights going forward to educate, to educate further more ladies in her life. Skill set acquisition beyond work specific skills, we need to emphasize that what needs to be placed on developing high level cognitive and non cognitive transferable skills, such as problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, 
teamwork, communication skills, conflict resolutions, which can be used across a range of occupational fields, because this is the way how we are going to make our youth to be more employable rather than just converting them only a degree holders from a point of so-called under a formal education system. Right. Target point number 4.5, when I say about it all talks about eliminate gender disparities in education and ensures that we have equal access to all the level of educations and vocational training for the vulnerable, including persons with disabilities, indigenous peoples and children in vulnerable situations. Inclusive and equi equity is the most important thing. All people, irrespective of their sex, age, race, color, ethnicity, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property or birth, as well as at persons with disabilities, migrants, indigenous people, and children and youth, especially those into vulnerable situations or other status, should have an access to inclusive, equitable quality education and lifelong learning opportunities. Now, vulnerable groups that require particular attention and targeted strategies include persons with disabilities, ethnic minorities, and the poor. Gender equality, we can't forget about it because all the girls and the boys, women and men should have equal opportunities to enjoy education and high quality. Now, when I say education, this is the most powerful tool for combating poverty, social exclusion and inequalities. So education being the most important tool, it has to be universal without any discrimination so that everyone can build a better future in their life. This should not be just defined based on your XYZ parameters. Rather, this is one of the most important things which everyone should inculcate in their life. If I talk about a couple of conclusions from the future roadmap, after COVID-19 pandemics, I think the world needs alternate ways to resume its life. Education is also moving towards technology. By next, say about coming 10 to 20 years down the line, the education industry will see the changes that never before. There will be more advantages for both teachers, educators, and students both. Shortly, education industry will become more diverse and accessible to the people. Because today, I remember before COVID, India has been specifically a country where we, we never believed into the concept of online learning, self-learning. We were very much all about classroom training formats because we were so used to go through that entire format. But fortunately, we are able to break that entire orthodox layer in our brain. And so successful in India, every part of India today, you see people are accessing technologically and they are connecting overall globally through all the technology and their online modes. I think this is a big shift, especially for India as a country. The literacy rate will increase and the education, there will be no new hope for the world for the next generations. Schools, colleges, and other educational institutes need to focus on new methods of learning. We need to step out of our entire predefined shells. Learning has to be more innovative. Learning has to be more creative. And learning has to have few more parameters which actually enhance the overall growth of a human being. They need to be more creative to innovate some effective, yet very simple alternative ways to give lessons and taking assessments from the students. Nowadays, with this fast paced technological growth and adaptation to online mediums by the education industry, we are making the vision of technology driven education more likely to be possible soon and it is already happening. Only thing is we are now waiting to get switch ourselves into the next deeper layer of technologically driven processes. Next 20 years, this will change the future of public education. Online learning, as we all are into that revolutionary turn into the education system. And I think that pretty much sets the tone of today, how we are actually absorbing our education system and how well we are mentally prepared to go with this right flow of preparing the roadmap for 2030 in a very, very strong and concrete manner. That's all from my side. Love, light, and peace to all of you. Wishing all of you a bright future. Thanks a lot Thank once again. Thank you.
Thank you, Sonesh. I was a bit worried uh, because you, you you picked up, you know, the aura and the excitement of uh, Dr. Firda. Okay, and uh, you picked up uh, of SDG4 and you talked about lifelong learning opportunities. Tibet. But what caught me most is your, you know, your uh, very subtle assertion on the gender bias bit about the, the you know, uh, that the girls and women, you know, and youth, they all must be, you know, given all learning opportunities, uh, which is all, I think, all over the world that is already in place, which is uh, interesting. Again, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in, in giving a round of applause to Sonex for an excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, okay. once again. <laughs> right. Now, from um, India, we'll move to the nearby neighbor. Um, I now like to call upon uh, Professor Dr. Huma Shah. She's on the phone still. Prof. Dr. Huma, you are muted. Okay. Prof. Uh, Prof. Dr. Huma, uh, she's an international yes, mental health trainer, okay, and consultant, global certified educationist, international transformational speaker, and managing director of Global Trainer Academy, and she's from India. Let's hear what Prof. Dr. Huma uh, Shah uh, uh, is going to share with us. All yours, uh, Prof. Dr. Huma. You are muted. Please uh, unmute. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, all of you. Um, very nice people over here. Super duper excited to share the beautiful <laughs> thoughts and views on uh, education. And uh, a beautiful and like, informative educators are here. So yes, um, a warm greetings from Pakistan, by the way. And without wasting a single moment, I would like to continue the talk of uh, respected uh, dearest Ms. Sunish, uh, who talked very beautifully and highlighted each and every point. I really liked her speech. So I continue with her thoughts to, with the help of sharing my screen so that every person can easily understand what exactly I wanted to share my perspective today. So let's talk about um, quality education, which is actually the agenda of 2030. So as you can see all of you that uh, today I have made it this presentation in a very vibrant colors, only because um, to get be a smile and to get be positive to implement and to get our and to achieve our targeted goal. So today we will learn about different educational skills and how can we help it? And uh, okay, my video is now on. Yes. So today the targeted goals and attempt to be discussed in upcoming 10 minutes in front of you all. And by the help of my presentation, you will be able to learn about soft skills development. You will be able to get and to require a knowledge of personal management. You will be able to learn more skillful communication skills. And obviously, don't forget to uh, neglect the very most important skills will, will be the hard and critical thinking skills. So yes, <clears throat> our world is it's, it's like a goal and uh, it's like a circle, but uh, it's uh, not, it's like can be completed without our education plus management system. United Nations Sustainable Development Goals has derived, uh, decided and uh, make it 17 goals for us to be targeted in uh, until 2030. But there are many factors influencing what education may look like in 20 years. Unprecedented global forces and technologies shifts in the way in which students want to learn and teachers want to instruct. And I predict that the future of education will require the age of teachers, it's an example like you and me, to be more collaborative, more creative, innovative, and the learners will be more demanding, confident, and focused. So whenever we are talking about the quality education, our targeted area, which is the agenda 2030, quality education, future education. Uh, so we cannot implement on all these sort of goals without implementing or targeting these sort of goals like 
to achieve the adaptive thinking and exponential rates, you should be able to gain more confidence and public speaking. These all are the small, small points, but this plays a very, very essential role in the quality education and in the present education as well. We will get the effective and verbal communication, which will be the well organized. And unfortunately, many of the countries, including my country as well, is facing um, and suffering from so many troubles and uh, legality of well organizations with the good verbal communication. So our overall analysis for critical thinking implementations and solution will be our target. If we do not have the target, to how to implement. So I don't think that we uh, can be able to achieve any goal regarding education, regarding climate change or regarding any other thing. So firstly, let's talk about the big ground that what is the present overview and what was the history? Every student have many skills and abilities to face this competitive world. The only thing to make their skills come out in a proper manner at the right time to make their career brighter and more shiner. But when we look towards our history, so it's about that um, in, in my history as well, that students were very, very selective and are very focused on a very limited format, very limited lecture notes, and they, their learning were very flexible. They uh, didn't, uh, didn't get any idea that how to do the project-based learning, how to do the group studying and all that era. But yes, when we are talking about the future or educational future classroom, so future educators will have to face and accept this fact that students will need and want to learn in a very flexible, personalized format. For this may mean to have more technology-focused classrooms. Yes, we need more technology-focused classrooms for a better future education. And the students will have a greater voice in their education and instead of simply listening to a lecture that has gone, simply listening to a lecture, note it down into the diary, just go to the exams and fill up the copies, get the grades and mark it, it's over. Now students don't want to do this and don't want to learn in this way. So how can we help? Now, this is the most important thing. So how can we help our educators, our listeners, our students to get implementing on all these things? There must be some sort of most determined skills which can help us out uh, to become more collaborative and to become and to adopt all that uh, implementations through which we can achieve our target. Only because why? And here is only the reason that why we are here today. So in my perspective, adaptive thinking, communication skills, and collaboration skills is the most important three determined skills which can help uh, all of us uh, through our, the beneficial of our future education. So regarding adaptive thinking, first we need to learn our students how to learn. Now, this is a very, very most important point, by the way. First, we need our students to learn how to learn for the better future, groom jobs. Learning is very precious and possible with the thinking is very much important. It's all related and correlated with each other when we are talking and when the students and when our educators are able to learn to teach and to know that how to learn, then they will be able to communicate and collaborate with the beautiful skills. Like future employees and students needs to be able and communicate the people within their teams, as well as people outside of the team and organization as well. Because in the era in which we are living is, it's not just only the way to study in under the four walls, no. We cannot um, grab our students or educators into a simple or in a one organization. We have to be grow up, we have to be move out, we have to be go out. And for this, you have to know more better about the collaboration. That the future employers and students will need a quickly adopt to a culture of collaboration and they will need to collaborate with others within and outside of organization, yes. Now, 
The next uh, most important determinant skills, uh, in my perspective, by the way, is critical thinking problem solving skills. Personal management, which is personally my favorite uh, skills, and inquiry skills. We need students, educators, and employees who can solve the problems, provide the ideas, and help to improve the organization. This is known as the actual power of our future education and the actual power of skills. Just, just to take the example, then today we are celebrating and uh, conducting a huge and a grand conference on education and how many organizations are come up together only for the benefit of education. This is called the critical thinking and problem solving skills. Every student and educator must have this ability to resolve all the problems. And yes, for personal management, that should be include the ability of work, to plan, to organize, to create more independently. It will show up your more skills, your more collaboration, your connection, and of course, the ability to improve better and better. When we are talking about the inquiry skills, so it will be the culture, which requires the students on how well they can speed up the questions, ability to ask greater critical questions. This we have to uh, inaugurate in our classrooms, in our future classrooms, technology focused classroom, that we should allow our students and we should uh, allow our colleagues and circles to ask the critical question, cross questions. And yes, uh, the last most uh, three determined skills, according to my information, is technology skills, creativity, and innovation, and soft skills. This needs to be emphasized in the digital age technology. Um, if everyone's students are required to learn technology efficiently, because nowadays in the era in which we are living in, um, even our toddlers are able to understand that what are the technology skills. And when we are talking about the creativity, it's about that this will correlate with ability to ask cross and creative questions. That's what I just said earlier that we should allow our students, our educators, our circle related colleagues to ask the cross and critical questions to enhance the problem solving, thinking critical and soft skills. This all will uh, help you out to become more collaborative without a good connection, without a good collaboration, uh, uh, without a historical background. Really, believe me, we cannot be able to achieve any goal, any goal. So now uh, let's talk about the most important part, which is empathy and perspective on quality education. The students can develop their skills by practical approach study in their various domains, obviously. But we cannot neglect this, that there is an increase in number of researchers and students who work in team and making the interact with outside their organizations. As students can improve their communication skills by speaking in front of their class, they can imagine the creativity and increase um, in the number of words. They can improve the level of their thinking abilities by their educational programs. It starts from the primary level of education. Yes, quality education, future education, SDG 4 agenda, 2030 agenda, agenda, all types of agendas can be created and can be started from the primary level of education. Now, in the end, there are the two questions which has to be arised that why do we need quality education with personal development? Why? Why you and me are here? Why we are conducting these seminars? On the daily basis, we are conducting such, uh, such sorts of um, webinars. Why we are talking about quality education? Education is running up in all over the world. So why do we need quality education? Why we want to target the agenda of 2030? So that is that it provides the outcomes needed for individual societies and communication. It's not just only about the degrees, about the grades, about uh, uh, your GPs. It's about the focus on a whole child socially, mentally, emotionally, regardless of any gender, race, or status, because it's just not only for the testing purpose, it will prepare a child for the life. 
So this is very, very important points which I have highlighted in front of you all. And I just really hope that it will definitely help you out to achieve the target as I am doing in my circle, you are doing in your circle, we are doing together all around the world. So thank you so very much for listening to me so, so, so patiently. And I would like to move towards our respected moderator, Professor Khairuddin. So over to thank you, sir. You. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Time. Thank you, Prof. Dr. Humasha. We have just heard uh, the views of Professor Humasha on uh, when we uh, construct the roadmap of education for 2030. She has, you know, uh, lined up for us uh, some of the things which were already there. We all know about it, but I think she is emphasizing the point that these are important to her. In her view, we need to have adaptive thinking, collaborative skills, communication. All that needs to be in the uh, in the roadmap. Okay, even for 2030. Well, we have other challenges, but with all the other challenges, digital and all the other distractions, you know, uh, that the world is, is coming out with, uh, that will, you know, um, what do you call, um, defray or, you know, make our students forget or sway somewhere else, even our educators. In her view, okay, she believed that this uh, should be in place. Critical thinking, you know, personal management, inquiry skill, uh, what do you call it? creativity, innovation, soft skills, and lastly, empathy and quality education. Thank you very much, Prof. Dr. Umasha, for sharing your views uh, on this roadmap 2030 on education with us. Uh, let's give her another big round of applause. Thank you. Now I'd like to uh, call upon our next speaker, which was actually supposed to be our first speaker. <laughs> huh? Dr. Sudakar Umel, I can see uh, him smiling there now. Uh, oh, okay. Dr. Sudakar Umel is a former head of Department Mechanical Engineering Department, uh, Sardar Patel College of Engineering. And uh, Dr. Sudakar is from India. Ladies and gentlemen, let's join me in welcoming uh, Dr. Sudakar. All yours, Dr. Sudakar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, moderator. Thank you, Nada, madam. Thank you for the model. So my topic is uh, related to education, education for sustainable development. Shall I share screen? Please. So my screen is visible? Yes, yes. A topic is education for sustainable development. It is a need of our, I said, Dr. Sudhakar Umai, governing body member of SA India Western section. Now I am working at Thakur College of Engineering Mumbai as an adjunct professor. Previously, I was head of department mechanical engineering Sardar Patel College of Engineering, Andheri, Mumbai. Education as a catalyst for change and sustainable development. Why we need education for sustainable development and for change in the climate change or education change. Education is a key to the integrated global framework of sustainable development goals. A quality basic education is necessary foundation for learning throughout life in a complex and rapidly changing world. Education is recognized as having one of the highest long-term returns on investment of all development goals. Improvements in education clearly aid in poverty reductions and economic growth. Education contributes to improvements in health, disease prevention, and social equality. Real change requires a roadmap. When we want change in education system, we have some roadmap for development of education. Creating and implementing an effective and sustainable roadmap requires the engagement of diverse and leaders driven to make difference. How your change can only happen if youth are equipped with appropriate tools and contributes and opportunities that empower them. The roadmap, call, roadmap calls for change, transportations, for shifts in mindsets, 
and behaviors we require some vision for indian technical education what is vision so we have to first focus on the vision and we have to follow the vision for the technical education improvements what is exactly indian technical education indian technical education must aim at the overall development of the country by involving the development of all sections of society including the service sectors industry sectors agriculture sectors these are very important for india and hence we have to introduce technical education in service sector industry sectors and agriculture sector there is strong case for developing technical education in india in line with competitive advantage of the country in global economy technology being taught by the present technical education system of the country only tell us how to do things this is very important how to do things is only theoretical questions but without actually knowing what to do which is a far more relevant question important must be given to higher education training research and social engagement engagements these are very very important areas where we have to concentrate our education system particularly for higher education training research and social engagement there is need for holistic approach and humanistic approach also needs and competencies of indian citizens the vision for the future of indian technical education the vision for the future of Indi indian technical education ought to start with knowing and deciding what to do with technical education this question needs to be addressed keeping in mind the needs and competencies of indian citizens since agriculture is the core strength of india the indian model of technical education shall target at exploring this core strength all the streams of technical education shall be developed in a way that helps strengthen an agriculture economy of the country this is the what to do part on the basis of which how to do can be worked out we have some challenges in education system and we have to solve all the challenges in particularly education sector education sector provides global and regional educational leadership strengthens national education systems and responds to temporary global challenges how we learn to develop the knowledge skills values and attitudes that enable us to make informed decisions and take individual and collective action on local national and global urgencies the education road map must provide a lifelong learning process integral to quality education that enhances cognitive social emotional and behavioral dimensions of the learning it is holistic and transformational encompasses learning content and outcomes pedagogy and the learning environment this is the main focus what are the outcomes of the education systems that we have to solve now this is very good challenge for the country then pedagogical educational systems and the learning environment everywhere when we want actual learning systems we have to create the learning environment in the institutes education should be promoted the contribution of learning content to the survival and prosperity of humanity government governments must prepare their education policies and framework to transform quality education leaders of learning institutes should make sure their governance and culture for culture are aligned with sustainable development principles 
uh, we have uh, some of the contents of the road map of education first is societal transformations what is exactly societal transformation it is helpful for achievement of the sustainable development goals towards building more sustainable world second is pedagogy and learning environment it is used to interactive project based learner centered pedagogy transform all aspects of the learning environment through a whole institution approach to education for sustainable development to enable learners to live what they learn and what they live third is learning content what what are the learning contents in the education systems are very important integrate sustainability issues particularly those enriched in the 17 sustainable development goals such as climate change into all kinds of learning fourth is learning outcomes we have to empower people to take responsibility for the present and future generation and actively contribute to societal transformations we have to create education culture in the institute and hence some effort should be made on made to move cultures of institutions towards collaboration solidarity and inclusion for people of all genders and backgrounds the development of education is to design to learn the skills like problem solving skills creativity innovation analytical thinking emotional intelligence and empathy and hence we have to develop all in the education systems next is collaborative learning is a student centered type of learning where small groups are often given more openly complex task and the teacher is just a facilitator collaborative learning is now one of the most important ways students learn and grow it is necessary to empower every child and youth with the right right with the right foundations what are the foundations we have to develop for the children and youth that are knowledge values and skills to shape the future as responsible global citizens this is possible when we provide proper education to every child next is it is necessary to ensure quality education for children particularly girls education educated children contribute intellectual capital and pursue entrepreneurial opportunities when they grow up boosting economic growth education must be effective so that children children actually learn universities must combine a commitment to change and innovation with the investment of considerable effort and resources to transform institutional policies to achieve this strong institutional leadership is needed today the world is facing various problems caused by human development activities such as climate change biodiversity losses resources depletion and the expansion of poverty it is essential to understand that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development including among others through education for sustainable development and sustainable lifestyles human rights gender equality promotion of culture of peace and non violence global citizenships and appreciation of cultural diversity 
and culture's contribution to sustainable development we have five areas can be focused on education for sustainable development first is advancing policy transforming learning environments building capacities of educators empowering and mobilizing youth accelerating local level actions now what is the importance of education for sustainable development it is the fundamental principle of next revision of the national curriculum standards based on the report fostering the builders of a sustainable society is referred to the national curricular curriculum standards for kindergartens elementary schools lower secondary schools upper secondary schools and schools for special needs education that has sequentially been implemented since the 2080 academic year uh, we have the advantages of such education for sustainable development why we need education for sustainable development so that we can satisfy all the goals of sustainable development these are the advantages they create ability to think critically ability to plan with anticipation of future scenario ability to think in multi dimensional and integrative ways ability to communicate ability to cooperate with others attitude to respect relations and connections and attitude to participate proactively thank you very much listening carefully thank you dr <laughs> sudakar wow thank you thank you uh, you, <laughs> you went a little bit uh, de detail you went a little bit micro but if i can uh, quickly in one minute uh, summarize your sharing with us is you were uh, began with a vision of the indian technical education and then you say that you know uh, you talk about a holistic and humanistic approach in, in getting all this and you mentioned about the uh, pedagogy and you went into the details and so like a few other speakers earlier on uh, it's very much based so the road map for uh, education of 2030 is very much guided by the 17 sdgs if i'm not i'm not I'm mistaken yeah dr sudaka thank you for sharing uh, your thoughts uh, on the topic Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I just I also want to say something. I'm little watching our audience, what they are yes. writing in the chat, uh, their comments. They're so great. Yes. Uh, welcome, dear respected audience. Uh, thank oh, you for oh. being with us uh, for your comments, uh, Doctor Sufakar. Uh, I will write. I will read to you one. Our great Ersil Tatoy Birai from the Philippines said. Universities of the future will not only cater to the learning needs of students, but also they will consider the needs of the global industry. This is for you because uh, you are coming from the engineering and what you say for this on the global industry. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, uh, thank you uh, Dr. Nada, for sharing. Yeah, yeah. I'm busy uh, trying to manage this. Uh, what you call speakers? It was good that you would take a look at the chat because I haven't, I haven't uh, had a chance to look at the chat yet. So, uh, okay. Without wasting uh, uh, any more time, I'd like to now uh, call upon. I'd like to invite our next speaker from Romania, uh, Mr. Mihail Alexandru Stanescu. I hope I pronounced your name right, Mihail. Uh, you're, from, okay. <laughs> you're from the University Polytechnica of Bucharest. So please uh, share with us, uh, Mihail, your views on this topic. Hello, your... everyone. Hello. Uh, is it uh, visible? The yes, screen? yes, yes. Yes, yes, screen okay. is visible. Excellent. So let's start. Hello, everyone. I'm Hello Alexander Sinesco from Romania. I'm studying at University Polytechnic of Bucharest uh, Computer Science. I'm in the last year of bachelor. And now let's try to have the next uh, great minutes with an interesting presentation. So first of all, I want to open this presentation with an interesting quote of a connational of mine, Cornelio Coposu, who was a Romanian senator post-communist period. And he has an interesting quote. 
and is the next meaning. Whoever forgets the past risks repeating it. So it doesn't matter. Okay, we are th thinking about future, but it's very important to live the present, but don't forget what was the best and the worst part in the past. So it's very interesting to have a correlation about this timeline. Now, it's very interesting, let's say. And now, why <laughs> we are talking about education? Why this topic is very, very popular nowadays? First, it's about creating a vision for teaching. Education are able to craft an ideal image about future using students, using child who can also try to adapt to the new condition. Because as we can observe, the world, the weather is not always like we have. Okay, in the past we have the coronavirus pandemic and we try to adapt. For this we need educators, we need knowledge and we need to have many, many interesting facts in technology. So educators try to accomplish in their classrooms and use this to sustain them throughout their teaching career. Now, let's put in correlation with SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. Global goals were adopted, okay, by United Nations in 2015, and we have some interesting target, like uh, to combat the poor, to combat the pollution, to have uh, equality about development, to have equality, let's say, in powerful of economic. So uh, it's something like try to protect the planet and ensure like in 2030, so let's say in seven years, all people enjoy peace and prosperity. I hope this will happen, but we will see what's happened because future is unpredictable. Yes. Now, let's say something about my country in this topic of education. So, first we are talking about little kids. So about primary education. It allows optional kindergarten at age seven and taken four years. For their entire public school education, it's free. Also, students are required to pay for supplementary materials and uniform. It's something like, okay, I have the basic stuff to learn English, but also I want to learn something more. So this is like more optional, like I to learn Chinese. Another interesting step after it's about middle education. In the gymnasium, students receive for the first time exact marks. And it's very interesting because they're became the competition between the students. I think it's a healthy competition because you will try to learn more and more. Also, there we try to adapt to multiple teachers and it's a schedule of 22 hours per week. And there is a national curriculum too. And one interesting fact that you learn general knowledge, which I think is very important also when you are an adult. After all of this, uh, maybe you don't want to follow to university. In my country, there where there is vocational education. It's something like to training through a network of sector structures under the control of the National Council and try to, and employers are bound by law to put in which their employees may develop fart and receive uh, tax credits in return. And after all of that come, let's say, the last step, let's say, the university sector, uh, which in Romania we are most advanced in Eastern Europe, and we try still to have a high level of administrative independence with own rules for admission, examination, and graduation. And one interesting fact, uh, let's say in statistical, okay, after university you are an adult, also you can learn using internet uh, free courses because sometimes, okay, now let's say I'm a uh, teacher in philosophy, but I don't like so much what I'm doing present, I can uh, change my curriculum like to go to computer science, something like that. So using free courses, we can try to adapt and to achieve some knowledge in that various uh, domain. Okay, in the next minutes, let's try to be a little bit visionary because we are in a summit. So let's try to see what can happen in the future in a good purpose. So I have three vision. First of all, it's about international, uh, sorry, artificial intelligence, AA and robotics, the future of employment. 
For this, the percentage of jobs recurring in, has uh, grown four times since 2030. And by 2030, all industry will use this type of target in the field of marketing and sales. That means that traditional jobs is such as customer service may disappear. Also, we can see in this picture, men, women, doctors, let's say in general, can make a good uh, team with robotics because something is very important to work on the details, not only medicine, but in details but in general. So for this, we need more prestigious and you can make a great team and also try to help a lot of people using this. Another thing, the second vision, it's about uh, global giants because as we can observe in many, many countries, there are a lot of international companies like Google, like Apple, like in construction and a lot of them. And for this, with the internet playing such a prominent role in our life nowadays, globalization barriers have been removed. So personalized experience in education will be created and global giants and multinational companies will most likely invest in education and educational technology. It's something like that. Okay, I want to change the world, but for this, I want to be in a good team with everyone. So for this, we try to have, uh, let's say, meet the way with everyone and together and try to achieve the targets. And the next vision in education, I think it's about learning management system in the future. For this, in my opinion, it's one of the most important thing uh, is system objective, which build the same, to make sure everyone in the education field is working towards a better future. Educational technology is a key to better collaboration in education and try to have a better future for us and our children. As we can observe, okay, we try to implement technology, but also I think it's very important to put, to still put accent on general management topics like time management. I think also for everybody, Today, the time is one of the biggest enemies, also for me, now in the university it is. But also I think it's very important to adapt and try to have a more efficient strategy as uh, we can have of in the software industry like uh, agile management, where everybody of the team has uh, some interesting roles. And when you try to finish your roles, also you can go to help the others who still uh, be in the same uh, role and together try to be more and more efficient. So the bottom line for what you really want to learn something. In my opinion, it's important before you start to ask yourself, what are the risks if I want to learn something? Why I'm, am I doing this? Would I want to see this or do this action words portray me as I want to be per perceived by others. So in another words, is something like this question can guide you about what are you doing and what do you really learn to do something? Because, okay, I have some example for which friends who their parents are doctors and this is like the tradition your parents is doctors, also the kids should study to Become study doctors. medicine. So <laughs> in, in my opinion, it's not very okay, but let's have a, like a joke. Okay, my parents are doctors in medicine. I don't want to be in medicine. I can be a doctor in philosophy. It's also the same title, doctor. <laughs> and I think it's very important because medicine uh, help the physical part, Philosophy have the spiritual part. And also one interesting, another fact, think and think and think about before you accept a challenge, because it's very important to analyze, okay, what are the opportunities if I'm doing something? And also before you act, because okay, I accept the challenge, but I, ha I still have time to see what can I do in that moment when I will take that challenge. 
So it's very important also to adapt in very new environment where you can be. Okay, and in the final, I want to end with a personal quote. It, it is something like, live the present, but without forget the main moments from the past, as Cornelius Popos said previously, and also thinking what can you do in the future to be glorious? Because, okay, try always to be efficient, but also it's very important to have dreams and try to be in the best shape of our lives. Thank you for your audience. Thank you. Thank you, Mihal, for sharing us your view of education. Very interesting, yeah. And uh, after listening to a few speakers, you're the first one who starts to mention AI and robotics. I was waiting for you to mention about chat uh, GPT, but never mind. <laughs> anyway, no. let's give uh, Mihal uh, a round of applause for sharing his views uh, on education on today's topic. Thank you, Mihal. Thank you very okay, much. Thank I, you. Yeah, I now like to call upon our next speaker, Dr. Professor Karudin. Can, yes, can I call someone if she's uh, audible? Uh, I want yes. to call our amazing Professor Dr. Queen Elizabeth Lucas. Dr. Queen, oh. please, oh, okay. are you audible? I think she has network problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, now she, she has unmuted. I'm yes, ready. I'm here to listen. I'm not speaking today. Sorry, permit me. I just want to learn from other great leaders. No, no, today. we want to. We want you to share your knowledge now with us. Uh, message, a little message, please. Yeah, just one or two minutes. Camera. <laughs> Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right, greetings, greetings from United Kingdom, Prof. Yes. Thank you so much. I was listening, I was learning from every of our leaders. I just want to relax today and listen. So if you still want me to say <laughs> something, well, I have to um, obey. <laughs> I have one to message, obey one message. my professor. Okay, we are all talking about a great um, a great topic today about education and how we're going to move it forward to reach our goals of 2030. And of course we can. And that is why we are gathering together to learn from one another, to listen, and also to share our thoughts, our ideas, because a tree cannot be a forest and no one can be an island. So when we all gather together, we are reasoning together. We are sharing our thoughts and we are bringing ideas on the table so that we can take action. And I respect and acknowledge all our great leaders because this is not my turn to speak. I'm sorry, I won't be able to mention all our all your names to say <laughs> hi to you all, but I recognize um, uh, Dr. Fida, I recognize Professor FCLT, I recognize uh, Mr. Mikai, mm -hmm. if I'm correct, uh, Professor yes. Nada. Thank you so much. Um, all correct, all correct. So you recognize and listen you. all because- You recognize uh, everybody, Professor yes. Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, no, thank you, thank you, thank you so <laughs> much. Big, big um, clap for our continue, great uh, Dr. Queen Elizabeth. Thank you for your input, you. Prof. Queen Elizabeth. Thank you, thank you. Okay, thank yeah, you. okay. Thank you, I really appreciate you. <laughs> all right, thank okay. You. Now, uh, let's move on without uh, further ado. I now like to call upon our next speaker, Dr. Sharda uh, Purohit. I, I hope I pronounced your name right, uh, Dr. Sharda. Yes, yes. Yeah, Sharda, uh, Associate Professor Sharda. of Noida International University. And we were in, uh, what do you call, Romania. Then we were just a few minutes ago in UK. Now we are going back to India. All yours, mm -hmm. doc, uh, Dr. Sharda, please. Thank you. Thank yours. you so much. 
It's Dr. Shraddha Burohit. I'm uh, currently working as an associate professor in Noida International University. I uh, actually belongs to uh, media fraternity. I uh, teach student of journalism and mass communication. So uh, today, first of all, good evening to one and all present in this very auspicious World Education Summit 2023. First of all, I would like to thank International Internship University, IIU Research Center, and Global Community for Education 2030 for inviting me as one of the guest speaker in this summit. Thank you so much, each, uh, uh, each one of you. So uh, today uh, is uh, the topic uh, uh, is, uh, or I guess, uh, theme is Roadmap to Higher Education 2030. So uh, if I talk about a uh, roadmap of higher education, I think uh, we should think about the SDG, UNESCO SDG, Sustainable Development Goal 4, which uh, says inclusive and equitable education. So Sustainable Goal 4 calls for inclusive and equitable quality education for all, spanning not only gender parity in learning, but also equitable education opportunity for a person with disabilities, indigenous people, disadvantaged children, and others who are at the risk of ex exclusion from education. So why, uh, why it is uh, this important? Why quality education is important? So first of all, I would like to uh, talk, talk about the quality education. So quality education is the foundation of sustainable development and therefore uh, sustainable development goals. So education is a force multiplier which enables self-reliance, boost economic growth by enhancing skills, and improves people's life by opening up opportunities for better livelihood. So the sustainable development uh, targets for 2030 calls for ensuring the completion of primary as well as secondary education for all the boys and girls and guaranteeing uh, equal access to opportunities for access to quality technical and vocational education for everyone. So this policy intervention, just a minute. So this uh, policy interventions will uh, require improving access and improving quality education, as well as addressing the relevant obstacles, uh, which actually include gender inequality, food insecurity, and armed conflict. So why education is important for any, any developing country or for that matter, any underdeveloped country, right? So um, why it is important? So, uh, Importance of education in 21st century. Education is public good, a fundamental human right of every, each and every one. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. Hello? Uh, yes, am I you are audible? audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. Carry on, okay, please okay. carry on. And, yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So education is a public good, a fundamental human right and a basis of guaranteeing the realization of other rights. So education is essential for peace, tolerance, human fulfillment, and sustainable development. Education is the key for achieving You have, uh, uh, what do you call, your sound is breaking up. Employment and for okay. and university, which is, hello? Now yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. yeah, 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 audible now. You were breaking okay. up a while ago. Okay, okay. Yeah, please get out. Yeah, thank you so much. So education facilitates intercultural dialogues and foster respect for culture, religious, and linguistic diversity, which are actually vital for achieving social cohesion and justice. Education, tolerance, friendship, and peace. To have uh, education complete, definitely no poverty. A gender a means for achieving a gender equality, I must say this, and enabling uh, girls and women to fully participate socially and politically and empowering them economically. Uh, if you have a good educated country, 
uh, society, definitely there will be a healthy society. Education saves the life of millions of mothers and children, help prevent and contain disease, and it uh, is an essential element of effort to reduce malnutrition. Again, if you have a good educated country, it will definitely fulfill the need of person with a disability. Education promotes the inclusion of person with disability. It also uh, fundamentally protective for children, young people, adults whose lives have uh, uh, been devastated by a uh, crisis and conflict. Provide them with the tools to rebuild their lives and communities. So um, why quality education is important? Now, uh, in, uh, definitely in 2030, we all are thinking that there should be a quality education. So quality education means that that will foster creativity and knowledge and that ensure the acquisition of fundamental or a foundational skill of literacy and numeracy as well as analytical problem solving and higher level cognitive um, uh, cognitive nature. So quality education foster interpersonal as well as social skills. It also develops skills, values, attitudes that enable citizens to lead healthy and fulfilled lives, make informed decisions, and respond to local and global challenges through education for sustainable development. Global citizen education. So um, it, it, it is actually very important a country should be, uh, the literacy rate should be higher for any country or educated country should, uh, mm -hmm. is always a developed country. So education transform the lives of individual communities and societies, leaving no one behind. Humanistic uh, vision of education and development based on principles of human rights and dignity, social justice, peace, inclusion and protection, as well as the cultural, linguistic, and ethnic diversity, shared responsibility and accountability. So India's target for quality education in 2030 would be, I think it should be ensure that all girls and boys, uh, boys complete free, equitable, and quality primary, as well as secondary education. Uh, another, uh, the second thing is ensure it ensure that all girls and boys have equal access to quality early childhood development, care and pre-primary education so that they are ready for primary education. In, uh, in 2020-30, uh, uh, we should concentrate on equal access for all women and men to affordable and quality technical, vocational and tertiary education, including universities. So in 2030, it, uh, every country, I guess, every country and every, we, each one of us should ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, including among others through education for sustainable development and sustainable lifestyle, human rights, gender equality, promotion of culture of peace and non-violence. Build and up upgrade education facilities that are child disability and gender sensitivity, provide safe, non-violent, inclusive, and effective learning environment for all. So if I talk about higher education, see, we all are working in higher education. So higher education plays a critical and multifaceted role in the new global development agenda. Uh, which aims to eradicate poverty and also addressing social needs such as education, health, um, social protection, job opportunities, uh, climate change, environmental protection. So the 17 sustainable uh, development goals address all these issues and uh, which actually can overcome with the help of providing quality education to each and everyone. We at universities, campuses around the world are expected to play a critical role in advancing the ambitious agenda forward. They have advanced human resource or they can produce a advanced human resource and knowledge required to address these complex challenges for sustainable development. Higher education institution strength lies in the interdisciplinary teaching and research as well as their ability to develop innovative solutions to global and local problems. 
overall higher education uh, serves as a pillar to entire educational system through its function of teachers training and educational research so higher education institution needs to further mobilize it is very important to mobilize right so higher education can go in many different ways in the future depending on what each country and each institution decides higher education is a tool for sustainable development so for the development of higher uh, education of any country a strong international cooperation in teaching and research is required which can help finding a new ways to solve environmental problem or societal problem or for that matter any kind of problem so if education will be there there will be no problem i must say this so uh, so there are uh, already a few of the universities uh, network on global scale and some universities yes. have already taken up some uh, steps to integrate sustainable development issues in their teaching and research in systematic way so but there are still a lot of people who need to learn about sdgs and get the academic communities behind this global agenda okay so higher education funding agencies also need to fully understand the role of uh, colleges and universities can play in achieving sdgs so these this includes scholarship funding opportunities that help universities work together to improve research and training areas related to sdgs so there should be a blended learning uh, if uh, we want to improve higher education there should be a, a blended learning uh, base and uh, uh, I, i must say interdisciplinary teaching learning approach should be implemented in the higher education system and should students should be able to opt many of the courses or uh, courses of their own choices in uh, so this is uh, this is all from my side uh, thank you thank you so much <laughs> Thank Over you, Dr. Shraibha. Yeah, uh, listening to you, uh, you know, when you began, I thought you were coming from the economics uh, uh, perspective, especially <laughs> when you mentioned multiplier. And along the way, there are many, uh, you know, economic uh, what you call uh, intonations. But that's okay. You gave an overview. But just now, you mentioned about blended learning. I mentioned earlier on. Yeah, it's now the the, the word uh, that people use is uh, what do you call it. Uh, hybrid learning uh, between hybrid virtual. learning yes. yeah 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 okay thank you very much uh, dr shrada let's so give much. a round of applause for a great sharing um now let's uh, call upon our next speaker uh, from india let's now move to tanzania okay dr ali bahati zablon kimaro dr kimaro principal and director of kilimanjaro field and class of environment protection initiative kepi uh dr kimaro oh you are there good all yours please share with us the your views about uh, uh the roadmap of education in 2030 let's hear from tanzania how do you look at it all yours thank you sir dr kimaro from tanzania okay thank you for this opportunity to share idea to talk together about the sustainable development goals 17 i'm a familiar of sustainable development goals and in my side i do implementation practically so i share some my work according sustainable development goals and i have a few of sustainable development goals already i have done and in my country also there are some activity was done it also is that all about Yes, 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 yes. It's uh, vis visible. Can you press the big screen? Okay. Okay. Yes. The roadmap of education 2030 is implementation of the 17 sustainable development goals. 
Today is the, our team, first day, as you can see the picture here. This is Tanzania map. Tanzania, we have a neighbor. Kenya, we are an Indian Ocean, Zanzibar, Mozambique, Malawi, Zambia, Democratic of Congo, Burundi, and Rwanda. I'm living here, here, Mount Kilimanjaro, here. Oh, okay, Kilimanjaro, yes. Oh, okay. Yes, here. Yeah, this is Honorable our President Samia Sulu Hassan and the Tanzania flag. This is a Kilimanjaro mountain, it's near to me here. And this is the National Park in Tanzania. Map of Tanzania National Park, you can see we have a lot of national park. This all is national park in Tanzania, and you can see the key here. Mm -hmm. Tanzania is East African country. Yeah, we have a national park, as you can see. We have a big five animal, can see, mountain, etc. The roadmap of education, implementation of sustainable development goals 17. I started with the sustainable development goals number one, no poverty. How? <clears throat> Eliminating poverty by giving free education and the assets that can help them to get food, health, and income. You can't say you, you, you need to end the poverty and the poverty don't have any assets. So there are many assets in, in different, in urban and in rural. In the village, you can give education to how to raise animals such as cows, goats, sheep, chicken, beekeeping, etc., in the village or rural area. In the urban, we can give them education of small entrepreneurship business, small scale, such as car wash, cosmetics, air salon, skin care, drive motorcycle, day care for day care for adults and children. This can make employment, they get income, they get health because they, they was eating a good food. Zero hunger, zero waste. Many market around the world, there is a waste, waste is there. How can we manage that waste? My side, I, I say, we can manage that waste to make organic compost. And this organic compost, we can use in the farm, different farm, raisin, coffee, banana, eh, as you can see here. We can end the sustainable development goals too. Sustainable development goals number three, good health and well-being. Our, our health need a good food, need a, a strong food. Even if you, if you go to the hospital, you are sick, you need a good food to get a good medicine. Or it can help you because you have a good food when you are sick. So good health, starting with the product, which product, which fertilizer come to your farm and which product is end. So by using good health, when it, or if you eat a good food, you don't go to hospital several times. It's a, a rarer, rarer to go to the hospital because your food is good and you have a good immunity. Sustainable development goals number four. Our country, we are in campaign of every child must learning. As you can see, this is a new site, a new school to ensure every child was right to learning, to get education, even if a, a, a female or a male. And the, the school must be in good order. And it, as you can see, this school is, is new. We can start to, 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 to make environment by tree plantation, gardening, and everything. 
has done that work, so they give a, a, another education of environment. Which education we talk about is marketable worldwide? Educa is education help people to create something a new, or is education just education? You finish and you get a certificate. Many people around the world now they are fighting employment. Why? Because education that they give is not good. He or she don't create something instead of the school. So we must when you talk about education, must be careful and you must think twice. Education for women is very important. Let's help the woman to get education around the world. Some area, some country don't like the woman to get education, but it's not good. Women need education. Yeah. <clears throat> Clean water and sanitation. As you can see here, this is natural spring water. And after natural spring water, they go to the canyon, as you can see. This is a good water. Some area have ocean water. Some area have lake water. How can manage that water? And the waste is in our house, in our schools, which management you can use it? Head ocean, head ocean basin, if you don't have the if you don't have a money to buy hand washing like this one, you can make in concrete hand washing basin like this one. So for sustainable development goals number six, you can succeed. Let's go 17, seven, afford, affordable and energy. By using that water, you can make it a, a power, as you can see here. Clean energy is a solar, clean energy is a wind. Industrial innovation and infrastructure, sustainable development goals number nine. As you can see this picture here, this is new building and under construction. This, this construction, a lot of people get employment here. After construction, the, a lot of office was here. So by using this industrial innovation infrastructure, you can see there are a lot of employment, a lot of life, a lot of everything. So it does provide a solution of poverty and hunger because employment. And creating the workforce of today and the future, Technology transfer in the building there, there are uh, internet, there are many things, adaption and distribution, building resilience and disability to supply chain and integrating sustainability as core business. Climate change or climate action. Many area in the world, they are suffer. They cry about the climate change. As you can see picture here, the problem is starting if, uh, like a, a, a map, but now the problem is like this one. And in the farm, many products such as banana and the others was not in good order because of climate change. The land you know, uh, fertilized because climate change and the tree was dry. I have a competition about the, the living things are in danger in excavation in the world and how to measure to perceive for future generation. I will say this to all and the, the competition was starting and the, I put in the group, I need the, all to be in the this competition to save the world. I, Dr. Libati Zablon Kimaro, 
this is my Facebook page, Kilimanjaro Field and Classroom Environmental Protection Initiative. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kimaro, for sharing with us the uh, beautiful uh, Kilimanjaro and the map and all that. And uh, you have approached uh, the topic today on uh, what you call um, education roadmap uh, from the SDG standpoint. Th thank you very much again, uh, Dr. Kimaro. He makes it great. Professor, let us uh, read one comment because we have here in the text. Uh, again, uh, our great Ersil Tatoi Birai said, in the process of industrialization, it is equated to development, but there is a risk to the environment. This Absolutely. Be, yes. This needs to be considered if in planning all development in the next decades. Thank you, respected yes. Ersil. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kimaro. Uh, I now like to call upon our next speaker, uh, His Royal Highness, eh? Ambassador Dr. Simeon Peter Olusola Obelei. I hope, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yes, I hope I pronounce it uh, correctly, right? Bile, CEO, yeah, you, of, you well. Bile, yeah. Yeah. CEO of T Tech, uh, continuing professional development training and services limited. So, from um, what you call Tanzania, now we move to Nigeria. So, the floor is all yours, uh, sir, Ambassador Dr. Simeon. Oh. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, for the opportunity given unto me to speak at this wonderful World Education Summit 2023. Uh, I, I give, I appreciate our dear Professor Manda, uh, Professor Nada, and all moderators, as well as all co speakers. This is a very a uh, big opportunity and very wonderful topic we need to take very serious in this, 20, uh, this 2023, because uh, looking at the future, according to the team, we are talking about the roadmap to education in 2030. According to SDG goal, uh, this 2023, we are having like, like 20, uh, let's say like 17, is it, is it up to 17? Yeah, 17 more yes, years. 17, yes. Seven, seven, seven more years. Yeah, yes. seven more years to meet up with the goal. Now, today, I want to talk actually on the roadmap, uh, the roadmap for education technology. Uh, because uh, when we are looking at everything, uh, as the technology is advancing and looking at the need of the students across the world, starting from primary level, to secondary level, up to tertiary institution level. We realize that we need to have a very good roadmap for them. And based on the thought of the past, and based on research in the past, some students are very good and very capable, but because of the approach of education that they are passing through or that we are using to train them, we couldn't bring out the ability in them. Some, we misinterpret them. Some, because of uh, maybe collective training, we misinterpret their ability. And at the end of the day, we have disgraced many students and denied them of the right education which they're supposed to have. So firstly, I will be speaking on like three to four points on which we need to adjust towards 2030 roadmap. The first one is that we need to personalize education, personalizing, education. Education, we need to look at how can we personalize education. For example, while we were in secondary school then, uh, there was a guy in maybe junior class. We, are, we were both in junior class. Then the guy always last in the class. While we, we are topping the first year, the second year, and when it was at the third year, preparing for maybe junior or heck or whatever, like a junior examination, so we just saw that this guy from the last position, he just came to pick the first position. Uh, every one of us was so surprised that why? You, this guy, what did he do? We were even trying to fight with the teacher and our, 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 our conclusion was very wrong then. 
we were trying to fight with the teacher. Maybe the parents have bribed the teacher. That why will this guy that has been taking the last position in the class come and overtake every one of us? And we, we are very sure of our capacity and so on and so forth. That why will this one become first? Come ahead of me. Not knowing that there is something that is that has changed in the life of the guy. And what is the difference? The parents got a private teacher for him. And when they got a private teacher for him, they individualized the teaching for him. And that made the difference in his life. That's why we talk about personalizing education. Why? Because the guy got access to personal training. And the personal training he got access to, it made him to become more effective and it opened his intellect and it bring out the ability in the, in the child. Then we, we don't know. You know, the normal way in a public school like that, the normal way they teach us, they teach everybody in math. Even then, we might be like up to 80 in a, in a class or even uh, 80 to 100 or even more in a class. There are some students that are being cheated. There are some students that are being cheated in that way. Some, they may not have the chance to sit at the front. Maybe they are sitting at the back. Some may have short sight. They may not even see the board at the, from the back. So all the teachings that we are teaching them, that they are training them, at the end of the day, they are not catching up. And at the end of the day, we will write, they will both write exam with those at the front that cash up, and those at the middle that cash up, and the, at the end, they will say the fail. And we have cheated those students. And most of them, they will have even dropped them out of school. We have deprived them of their ability to survive and cope. Look at it now. The guy I was talking about today is now, is now a professional pharmacist. Why? Because he was denied the access of individualizing or personalizing education. And so once they gave him the opportunity for individualism or personalism, he cash up and he, he came forth and he even got to the science class. And at the end of the day, today, he is commanding in the pharmaceutical industry in Nigeria. So what am I speaking in essence? What I'm speaking in essence is that if we can look at how we can personalize education, maybe technology-wise, then we will be able to bring out the capacity, the ability in each student. Students are different. They differ. Teaching 20 students in the same room may make one to understand and the other is being deprived of understanding. Why? Because some students are not used to collective teaching. They need individualized teaching, personalized teaching before they can catch up. So if we can take note of this, we will be able to meet up with the global education goal 2030, because the time is not behind us. The second thing I think we need to look at is assessing student learning. The mode of assessment in the past is very, very wrong. At times, we just, well, some, some students, maybe because of the fear or tension, because of the date, because of the fear the teacher imposed on them, what they've even studied, they might have even studied very well, but because of the tension and everything at the exam hall, they've forgotten everything they've learned. And we base our uh, mode of assessment on writing tests, writing exam, or whatever, whatever, whatever. I am suggesting that we should go technology-wise. Test them based on their skill and their practical ability, not the one that we are writing in paper. All those ones that we have been written in paper, they, are, they can be manipulated. Many, not even they can, many have been manipulated up to tertiary level. We have seen it, we have witnessed it, that some ladies that, those, that we know that they, they cannot even defend what they claim to have, we will see them coming out, graduating with first class in university because they have bribed their way to the top. Do you understand? And some, some men too, we will see them 
graduating with first class. And we, that we know we are very, very good in class then, at the end of the day, they will short, short change us. At the end of the day, we will come out with two two or two one. Do you understand? Now, it is because of the system of uh, assessment. It is not accurate in the past. So we can have a new mode of assessment, a kind of way that we assess students individually as well. Personally, we can give them a kind of mental assessment. We can give them a kind of practical assessment. What, assess them based on what they can do, not on what they can write. Some people, the time you ask them to write, they are keeping something behind the desk and they are copying from there. You don't know. Some are copying from Google. Some are copying from the book. Some are people written on their lap. You don't know. That is why we are having education malpractice. But if you can assess them based on what they can do, then we will be able to achieve the roadmap for 2013. Then the next one, uh, point I want to talk about is supporting social learning. Now, uh, we, we need to support social learning. Uh, in fact, they are uh, like through uh, learning through social media, or let me say learning through learning management system, because that one will bridge some gap. Like there was a time I did one course online uh, from Metropolitan uh, School of Business and Management in the UK. I did it while in Nigeria, but the platform that MSB, I'm not, I'm not in any way advertising them, but I'm just telling you what I experienced. So because I do, they are not paying me for advertisement. But what I'm actually saying in, in a nutshell is that they get the kind of platform on their LMS management system, learning management system, they get the kind of platform that they record video class, live class. So you will, you will be online and you will be as if you are inside the classroom with your lecturer. And not only that, there is a social opportunity to interact with your lecturer socially and with your colleagues socially. Then we are even having a kind of collective assignment through social networks, collective and um, uh, collective projects that we we did together and do together successfully. Even while we uh, somebody from Nigeria is interacting with somebody in UK somebody in London, somebody in uh, Canada, and so on and so forth. So there is a social connection. So if you can support social learning more, then students will be able to, will be able to bring out the ability in students. And some students will not be deprived of their capacity. Then we won't be, miss, uh, we won't be giving them wrong judgment. And to the extent that, they will, have, uh, they will have, uh, they will have expelled some students from school when they don't even know that they have more capacity than others. Then another one, uh, which is the last one I will be talking about because I have many, I have many. So the last one I will be talking about is enhancing the role of stakeholder. The role, we cannot, we cannot overlook the role of stakeholder. And one of the primary stakeholders in education sector is the teachers, the faculties, the tutors, the professors, the lecturers. You need to motivate them. And their own training should be the first. The world is going technologically now. And we still keep our teachers. Most of our teachers, our professors, they don't know how to use the social media. They don't know how to use learning. They don't even know about learning management system. Eh? They don't know how to make use of that. They don't know how to upload their lectures on learning management system. They don't know how to record their lecture on learning management system. They don't know how to do this and that. So now we are giving birth to children with technology age. How will those teachers cope? So we need to look at how to train the teachers, the stakeholders. The teachers is enough, the primary stakeholder. We need to motivate them. We need to train them. We need to update them technology-wise. We need to update them technology-wise. Let them know that these are the tools that is available for education this time. So that is a very good roadmap that we can work on towards 2030. Let us upgrade our teachers, lecturers, 
uh, professors. Some professors are still sticking to the old system, Asian system method of teaching. We don't say they are outdated. They are not. But they can still integrate technology and make it more effective. They can make the mode more effective so that it becomes attractive to students. When we can embrace technology, there will be no boundaries. Students in India, students in Nigeria, in the US, they can collaborate and learn together on the same platform at the same time. Okay, like look at the platform International Internship University is giving, creating for many. It's a very good platform. Yes, IIU is creating a very good platform that brings together people from different, different countries, different, different races. They can learn from the same lecturer. Do you understand? So when everyone is IT oriented, when they are technological updated and they are technological literate, then the lecturers, the teachers, our stakeholders, they will be carried along and they will be, we will be sure that what they are teaching our students or even what technology is talking about is the real thing because somebody must direct the children so that they will not be misled. Somebody must direct them, they must train them on the same use of that technology. So let's invest in the teachers as the primary stakeholder. Then also parents, we need their cooperation. They are also stakeholders in this education system. We must not look down on them. If they don't pay the school fees, then the school will not progress. That's just the point. We need to carry them along. We need to ensure they see the quality of what they are being, their children are being offered across the globe. So in a nutshell, uh, roadmap towards 2013, education 2030 requires personalizing education. It requires us to upgrade our assessment, assessment method. It requires us to integrate socialism. And finally, we need to do what? To take care of the stakeholders. So and if we can do that, by 2030, educational system will become revolutionized. And quality education Equal education, according to SDG Goal 4, will be fully achieved before then. Thank you for the time given to me. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor, Duke Ambassador, Dr. Simeon, Peter, or Lou Sola. I like that part when you began, when you talk about personalized education, you know, and the outcome of what happened to the guy, you know. But uh, my yeah. question is, you know, with so many students, uh, or, you know, today, do we have the luxury of doing all that? It's interesting. And if I may summarize uh, the, the things that you're, you're suggesting for our roadmap uh, of education for 2030, you talked about personalized education, access technology, and then assessment and support of social learning, and finally, the role of the stakeholder. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency, for sharing your views uh, from uh, Nigeria. Thank you, sir. Okay, we now come, I think it's our last speaker for, for the night. Yeah, uh, the, the Prof. Nada, is it our last speaker for the night? Uh, yes, yes, uh, Dr. Uh, yes, Pram yes. Pramod is our last. Yes, yes, our will last speaker also, for... Yes, yes, uh, because he will also respect the time. Uh, we have another session after, so thank you. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, uh, when I now like to invite our next and our last speaker. I, w I wouldn't say last speaker, our final speaker for today. Okay, we have one more tomorrow night. Uh, Dr. Pramod, my good friend, Dr. Pramod Mahajan, how are you, sir? Yeah, who is a board director. <laughs> good. Uh, what do you call principals? Uh, Executive Council, Sharjah Private Education Authority of United Arab Emirates and director and principal of Sharjah Indian School. So uh, from Nigeria, now we move to United Arab Emirates. The floor is all yours, Dr. Pramod, please. Yeah, thank you. As the time is limited, let me uh, allow me to share my screen. And then I'll right, go please. directly, directly on the topic. Yes. Yeah. Is it visible? Yes. 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 
Yes, yes. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Salaam alaikum. Namaste, namaskaram, whatever we applicable. <laughs> now, World Education Summits, let's come to the topic, the Roadmap of Education 2030. It's all about education, education, and education. The global perspective, what to do, when to do, where to do, why to do, and with whom they wanted to do, how it can be realized, how to realize the personalized learning, how to realize bringing all the countries on the same page at the same platform. What does it matter? Future fit elements, what future fit, what futuristic element we are developing. It all depends on how actually it's matter, the SDG aspect, not only with the re respect to uh, education, but in all areas. How does it matter, the ecology, the specific contents and the skill, the skill personalized education? How do I make it matter? By pedagogies, efforts, resources. And did it matter? The most important thing is research development and assessment. So that is somewhat the global perspective of the roadmap of education 2030. The breaking iceberg for that is logical contradiction. There are a lot of logical contradiction which we have to remove and we have to make a logical sequence, what to reject, what to modify, what to upload, what not to upload, and by critical thinking, doing a lot of innovation, a lot of researches. Let us see what's the future of education by this small video. What you want? Is it what does the future hold for education in five Sound years? Is there, sir? Ten? Yes, what yes. will yes, learning sir. be like for students, and how will teachers instruct? And what role will security and IT operations play in keeping critical functions online and facilities and data secure? Today, the learning experience is already extending beyond the classroom. Soon, on-demand and more personalized learning will more make it even easier for students to fit school into their own schedules and learn in the way that best suits them. Finishing a course best has will be, to be based done. on the knowledge you've acquired, not a specific date. It's not about the completion reality, of the course. Digital images superimposed on live content and virtual reality, an artificial 3D environment, are some of the hottest technologies today. In education, they can allow students to visit monuments, explore Mars, and even travel back in time. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is the ability for computerized machines to mimic human thought processes. It could make it possible to personalize the delivery of information and assessments to an individual. It could also even shift the, the role of the teacher to that of a facilitator, supplementing the AI lessons and helping struggling students. And for academic research and discoveries, AI could help break through boundaries we can't even conceive right now. Everything you do today and tomorrow, from capturing lessons to enhancing research capabilities with AI, depends on a strong IT infrastructure foundation. All your systems, network, mobility, collaboration, security, data center, need to work These together are the aspects seamlessly to, be completed to support by the changing landscape and of education. And Cisco can help. Think about those days when the teacher driven classroom, and now it's the student driven classroom. The yes. ownership of their own learning lies on their own shoulder. Yes. It's, if you have to differentiate, it is just like that. The thrusty crow, those days. <laughs> and by 2030, the thrusty crow will be using like this. And they will resolve yeah. that logical sequencing. <laughs> I'm not surprised. The crows are going to be smarter than us. Yes, <laughs> yes, certainly. It saves a lot of time and a lot of extra effort. Yeah. Ravinath Tagore, the Gurudev Ravinath Tagore used to say, don't limit a child to your own learning, for he was born in another time. And the same <laughs> way, Professor Sugata Mitra, Learning happens naturally, and minimum intervention in the process of learning brings maximum learning outcome. So as a teacher, Absolutely. we have to bring the minimum intervention in the process of learning yes. by yes. scaffolding them. And what is that roadmap then? Meta skills. 
the skill about learning about how to learn, understanding about how to understand, applying about how to apply, reflecting about how to reply, disciplined mind, educating for the unknown, whatever they have known, how quickly they apply in the unknown situation and metacognitive skills, nurturing, about, nurturing awareness about thinking, thinking about how to think for a self-being. The artificial intelligent internet of things, x-factor reality, that is augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality. By 2030, 15 trillion jobs are waiting for you if we follow this roadmap and 2 billion jobs will be impacted very less. So 15 trillion jobs by 2030, if we follow this, smart, uh, this map, roadmap, like that. This is not my, my figure, this is the figure by, given <laughs> by the world level forum. Yes, what is yes. that model? Evolving education model, students are digitally smarter, exponential technology is becoming reality, Data-driven schooling, data is the new currency. Efficiency and standardization, roadmap, milestones. This is that model, hyper-personalized and adaptive learning. Artificial intelligence and machine-driven learning, experiential learning, mixed reality, internet of things, credentialing. In detail, if you have to think, Hyper personalized and adaptive learning, self space of learning. The child should come with the smiling face and go with the smiling face. 2030 roadmap is about competency based progression. Competency based progression, how competent you are. It's not about the percentage or percentile. Schools are not the factories of the marks, they are the centers where the competencies get developed. AI and ML driven machine learning and augmented and artificial learning, learning insights, teachers out there, teachers are no more stage on a stage, no more guide on a side, no more even felicitator, they are the scaffolder. How this AI changing the life, see that. How to bring AI within the classroom. <laughs> See the magic of AI. KG yes. students thinking about solar cell, solar system. Bringing AR, yeah? augmented reality. Augmented reality. Finding out Google Earth. World is on a classroom on the single whiteboard. How the things are happening? Augmented reality, taking them to a virtual tour. Virtual tree. Where we are going today? Yes. Where, where are you going today? Fatima yeah. said. Fatima yeah. said. Yes, ma'am. Where are you going today? Fatima yes. said. Fatima said. Yes, ma'am. Where are you going today? I go to zoo. They are going to zoo. Where is your cap? And we brought the zoo within the classroom. Augmented reality, artificial intelligence. Physical feeling digitally. That will be the road map. Go anywhere throughout the world. Yes. 
without disturbing their lifestyle, without disturbing their ecosystem, we can visit to them. We have to respect the privacy of the animals also, not only ours. What is that experiential learning? Real-world learning experience, real-time coaching, real-time feedback. Let them commit the mistakes. Let them find out the root cause of the mistake. Let them redo, reinvent, and recreate. Mixed reality. Blended learning. Flipped classroom. Scaffolding. Internet of things. All the campuses should be connected with the smart classrooms and let the learned lecturers and the professors of the world discuss with the students. Credential and verification, digital portfolios, that will be the roadmap for 2030. Why to wait for any sort of physical verification? Digital portfolio, wherever, whoever wanted to cross check their academic ranks and academic credits, they can check that thing. It's all about various steps. Paradigm shift in curriculum, keeping the stakeholders well informed, investing in right resources and technology, safeguarding the schools from all sort of threats and creating the growth mindset. That is the roadmap, creating the growth mindset. What is that? We are witnessing the paradigm shift. There is a growing awareness among the educators and families. Today's curriculum needs to evolve to meet the education needs of today as well as tomorrow. So we have to bring tomorrow's school today within the school. That is the roadmap for 2030. Keeping the stakeholders at the heart of all the services. Each and every stakeholder should be kept well informed. We have to plan the resources for the right purpose at the right time in a right way. We should not dump the classroom with the technologies. We should train the students to embrace the technology without becoming a techno addict. We should guide, we should scaffold the students to use the machine learning without becoming the machine. Cybersecurity. We have to create that sort of ecosystem where each and everything is safe. And that is possible by strengthening the internal controls. That is the important concept of roadmap of education, future education 2030. Changing the mindset. We have to come out of the comfort zone. We have to come out of the fixed mindset and move ourselves towards the growth mindset because future is already existing in culture and the mindset. The most important concept is metaverse. The roadmap of education 2030 is the metaverse. Metaverse, yes. metaverse in education. Augmented reality in education. Education is one of the industries that is very actively being disrupted by technology and digitalization. New learning formats leads to greater student engagement, which in turn makes the knowledge and skills stay longer. This adaptive technological solution to education is becoming increasingly popular. Education can rather be flexible when it concerns the method of increasing student engagement and interest in learning. Online courses, chat box, gamification, and of course, virtual and gamification is another concept. Today, you can find all of them in the curricula to ensure the engagement, attainment. Today, we'll see how augmented reality can help teachers make their students look forward to the upcoming lessons. Before we dive deep, let's recall briefly what augmented reality is about. From its name, we can conclude that the technology augments the real world around us. It is it by overlaying the virtual object over the real image, most often on the smartphone screens. 
Some of its advanced applications require special AR classes such as Microsoft HoloLens. Usually, AR objects are created either by processing multiple photos of a real object or by 3D modeling. To place virtual objects on screen, augmented reality apps use either special markers such as QR codes, geolocation data, or object recognition feature. In AR, I already shown the uses of this in the classroom. Or interact with them. If the nature of the application requires it, as compared to the virtual reality, most AR applications run on smartphone or tablet, needing no special equipment. This makes augmented reality technology specially adaptable for the use in the education industry. Many education apps include printable markers that teacher can use in the classroom. But how is different from the virtual reality? Although they both use the same tools and technology, the main difference between them is where virtual reality aims to replace the real world, while augmented reality respectfully supplements it. But how augmented reality is being used in education? Let's explore. By asking the student to download an augmented reality app that can enhance the learning process, the teacher get an additional tool for boosting the student interest in the lesson. AR makes the educational content richer and more engaging. That can ultimately help to train better professionals. But how AR is enhancing learning in the classroom? AR allows us to use a virtual object instead of physical ones. Many institutions still use physical models during the lessons. However, augmented reality raises this learning method to a new level. See the change. See the scaffolding. With augmented reality, teachers can recreate dynamic and interactive 3D models of almost any object, like a beating heart or the planet rotating around the sun. In augmented reality app, nothing is impossible. Dinosaurs, space bodies, chemical compound, internal organs, natural phenomena, There's anything no can be made into 3D models to add visual support to the topic of the study. For example, the org that designed for elementary schools offer a couple of dozen of AR courses aimed at making young students love learning. Better sensation of size and perspective. With AR, you can manipulate object by the hand gestures and can visually gauge the size. Manipulation of the object, the customization of the object to understanding and depth. Three D making cross sections can help with more solid knowledge than reading books. To enhance the thinking process. Interactivity. Design thinking. In AR, student can manipulate the three D models as if they are real. This helps the learning process tremendously as it creates a more complete picture of the object. Interactivity also gives a higher degree of autonomy to the students. They can study the subject using their own scenario instead of following the prescribed one. In addition to the greater engagement, interactive AR apps gives students the feeling of freedom and control over the learning process. Controlling the learning process and enhancing the engagement, faster learning. Augmented reality allows adding various information to the object on the screen. This feature is widely used in the tourist apps. Education can use this feature too. Like if you point the camera at the banana, you can see its nutritional info. By placing the additional information next to the corresponding object, creates a stronger link between the object and the data. Extended information. Therefore, the knowledge is created faster and retained longer. Language is not the barrier. Simulation of multiple senses. Simulation. It is a known fact that our memory works best when multiple. But it all depends on innovation, AI creativity, AI and critical thinking. Get more complete picture of what they are studying. Augmented reality can show us the process from inside, demonstrating how different parts of the heart function. The sound of the heartbeat completes the picture. There are also apps involving multiple senses, like Zoopazam, featuring dozens of animals. Their realistic sounds make the young student amazed and want more. AR offers seamless interaction between the real and virtual world. Seamless as you interaction. Learn to interact with the object or event in a natural way. Augmented reality has the power to change how we use computer, and its potential in education is just a beginning. AR is the future of education. That's all from my side. But one Thank thing you. is very clear. One thing is very clear. Technology plays the vital role, but beyond that, what is there? is the human trends compassion innovation creativity design thinking thought process that is the milestone and that is the road map of 2030 embrace the technology without becoming techno addict use the machine without becoming a machine thank you thank you very much thank you dr pramod majan uh, what a way to end our day one uh, world education summit uh, 2023 with your uh, what do you call uh, metaverse and you know the use of of ar you know and you know and technology 
um, some of those items have already been mentioned with uh, from with the earlier speakers but your portion your last uh, section uh, is actually putting to life all those views and all those ideas that was even mentioned by our earlier speakers thank you very much dr pramod mahajan very thank interesting you. very exciting let's give a round of applause to dr pramod mahajan for his presentation and not forgetting thank you very much also to all the speakers uh, who shared with us their views on our topic, uh, the, the on our theme, uh, the roadmap of a uh, roadmap of education to zero to zero in our World Education Summit two o two three, which is the uh, what you call the first mm. day today. Mm. Thank you, uh, Prof Nada. So my job is now uh, done. Yes. I am now handing over the session today to you, Prof Nada. Mm. All yours. Uh, yes, yes, I have a problem with the camera, so oh. I will, oh. <laughs> yes, yes, something is happening. I don't know what, uh, All right. uh, I need to be, uh, I don't need to move, let me see. So, this is the Road of Education 2030, day one, amazing World Education Summit 2023, jointly organized by Global Community for Education 2030, International Internship University and IIU Research Center. Today, we hear the importance of education and it is multifaceted nature and demonstrated in the fact of our great estimated guest speakers today. And they said it and presented in the number of ways for a number of purposes. We know now already what is the focus of education 2030, what is new about the SDG 4, about the education, and what is the focus and how it will increase on the access, inclusion, equity, quality, learning outcomes at all the levels with a lifelong learning approach. That we heard today. We heard today how will be the school of the future. They will make us Space. They will have spaces for the students. They will have chance to manipulate, to learn about, we hear about new technologies, VR, AR, voices control devices, laptops, tablets, everything. So the agenda 2030 for the sustainable development is really launched. It is and going to be and emphasize the world of the universal respect for the human rights, for the human dignity, for the rule of law, for justice, equality, and non-discrimination. Today, already four, four outcomes we have. We want a healthy and stable population. We want world-class education and training. We want effective social protection. We want a transformational culture. So today, first and foremost, I want to thanks to our great project directors on the first day of the World Education Day. Professor Pradip Tamandal, the founder of Global Educators Forum and Global Metaverse Community. You make a wonderful job. Mr. Piyush Pandit, sir, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for giving us this great IAU. Professor Nada Ratkovic, thank you. Dr. Snikta, <laughs> Dr. Snikta, the CEO of the International Internship University and the chairperson of Global Community for Education. Thank you. I want to thank to be our beautiful Dr. Inga Karchalava, the Europe head, for being with us for giving us the life. So no words to express the gratitude to all our great speakers, valuable time enriching us. Professor Karudin, you are amazing. Thank you. You make this day wonderful. Thank you so much. So let's see tomorrow. Let's see tomorrow how we will continue our audience. Thank you. Thank you, lovely audience, for being a part of our first day World Education Summit. Keep reflecting, learning, collaborating, yes. enjoying, being nice to yourself. And be tomorrow <laughs> with us at the same yes. time at 4 right. p.m. Thank you. So, Dr. Kimaro, Dr. Firda, yes. Inga, uh, and yes, Dr. Pramon, uh, Professor bye. Karin. Yes, Nada. Professor yes. Karudin, we need yes. to go to our great uh, Kimaro to Kilimanjaro next time. Okay. No, yes, we must. Yes. We must be. We must. You're welcome. You're welcome. 
we must take a photo, we must take a selfie in real, real okay, in yeah. Kilimanjaro. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and, and yes, uh, in United. But, we, but before Arabian that, Army. but before that, we will stop in the UAE and get Dr. Pramod yes. to buy us coffee. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. Yes. Yes. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, All right. Yes. Okay then. Bye. 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 Oh, yes, here we have Professor Charles. Professor Charles, thank you. Our great Vice Chancellor, thank you. Thank oh, you for okay. being with us. I didn't see. Thank you. Bye. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, I saw that. Professor. God bless you all. Thank you. God okay. bless you. God okay. bless you, Professor Charles. Bye. 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 -bye.